Welcome. Today I'm looking at the brand new Spectra Layers Pro 11 from Steinberg. Uh, they announced that a couple of weeks ago. They offered you buy 10, you know, get 11 for free. I already had 10, so I looked at the prices and wasn't too bad actually. With a 15%, I guess, introductory discount, I got my version upgrade for $70. So that's pretty good. I'm very happy. As you know, I ranted about upgrade prices on some other videos with some other companies. <laughs> and sometimes you feel you pay more being a loyal customer. So I think Steinberg still has it somewhat in the ballpark of being fair. So there are a couple you know, new elements to it. Uh, the look already uh, is pretty similar, except the menu now is dark. You can change that, but that's the default look. Uh, stuff over here, this is version 10 on the left side and version 11 here on the right. As you can see, the layer and the unmaked tabs disappeared. Layer is still there, but unmixed and process are pretty much gone because they renamed that. They call them modules. So under modules, you've got all your elements and even easier, you have them on the side here on the side panel. So when you go to your audio, you select something, you can click on it and it pops up immediately and you can go through and open multiple ones and you can then preview. And you can also, this is new, when you preview the file, you can actually change the settings while listening. You don't have to constantly stop and do it again, like in version 10. So you can actually, depending on your CPU and, and the power of your computer, you can do this in real time. And that saves some you know, uh, time, especially on the denoising part. If you really want the reduction ratio, you want to play with that a little bit, you can do it. Wait a couple seconds, it's going to readjust. And you don't, hit, you don't need to hit stop. You just stay on preview, right? So that's awesome. Uh, second new element is the modules chain. Now you can actually take your favorite plugins in order how you want them to, you know, modify uh, an audio uh, source. Let's say you do dialogue cleanup. You can say, you know what? I always do a declipper. I do the de -esser. I do a denoiser. And at the end, maybe I do a de reverb. I don't know, but this would be, let's say, in order uh it's going to be processed right and you can save this as your preset and you can have multiple and this will help you if you do a lot of dialogue for instance and you have some settings you know they work and they're fine and you can apply this uh a preset it will run the entire chain right that's that's awesome second new thing is of course the volume envelopes that is brand new and that's very exciting so let me demo that for you. Let me pick a little segment here. I'm going to go to Unmix Song. I don't have vocals on this one, so I just click Apply. Here we go. And what it does now, it gives you the opportunity to actually do volume writes with the envelope. So not just globally, like as we know earlier on, in the other versions down here with the volume uh, dB slider, you can just lower the drums to, you know, minus five, whatever, make them softer or get the vocals up a little bit and, and, and change the balance of your song. But now look at this. So here I have my, you know, my usual stems. This is, you know, the drum track. And if you click this icon down here, this is the uh, envelope icon. Now in here, you can actually set points and you can create curves and even visually you see so for instance i gonna just take out the drums and bring them back i'm sure it's, it's you know just for for fun right now so if you listen to this so anyway so you can do your own rides and and again the general volume will stay Untouched, you can still lower and raise the entire stem, but you can actually do your own curves and maybe fix and correct a couple of things that you notice, right? So, so that is nice. Uh, also, brand new is the idea of drag and drop, which in version 10, you could only do uh, stems and drag them back into a spectral layer here for editing. But now look at this, you can actually get your drum stem here and I can drag it into a folder stems for instance and you just drag and drop them you know here's the piano and if i this is a folder i made earlier if i open this one up you know i see that what you have uh, dragged in here right with a timestamp as well so that's pretty cool that might save you some time you don't have to go up to file 
and you know click or uh, export layers and also you can only export the one things things you just rendered which is super convenient you can just grab a portion of your audio and render that out and then drag and drop it and put it somewhere else and of course in ara mode you can do this in cubase immediately when you uh, load spectral layers in there that works also amazing so sonically, there are a couple of new things, of course. There's an unmixed chorus, which means if you have vocals with a background track, other singers, they're going to remove those singers and put them on a separate stem. If you have crowd in a live performance, you can actually unmix the crowd and then do a volume ride and have the crowd maybe be softer when the band comes in, right? Depending where the mic was at the show. Um, there's also, which I find quite fascinating, the unmixed mid and side mode. So now you can unmix the side mode and, and process that or clean it up or if there's noise on there or other things you need to fix. So those are a couple new things in here, which I think are awesome. So I think for $70 for me, that makes certainly sense. Now, sonically, yes. Let's go back and compare the renderings. I picked one of my songs from last year. I've done a smooth jazz single again uh, called uh, Rarely Cruisin' and has uh, piano, drums, bass, strings, uh, violin, and saxophone. And I rendered a small snippet out in 10 and in 11, and I put them in WaveLab so we can A and B those two uh, renderings and see if they sound different, do they sound better? And yeah, let's find out. So comparing uh, 11 and 10 in standalone mode, I pulled up the task manager and I wanted to look at the memory usage. And you can see that 11 uses currently 247 megabyte without any file in here. There's nothing loaded, no audio. There's no task being run. And 10 sits at 120, so it almost doubled in size what it needs just to be present. So be aware of that. So uh, most computers have enough RAM nowadays, so there shouldn't be a problem. But if, if it gets a little sluggish, especially if you have more programs running, you know that 11 uses a tiny bit more. All right, here we are in WaveLab. I made an audio montage, two lanes. One is version 10 on the top and version 11 on the bottom. So here I extracted uh, the base. If you look at the waveform in general, it looks very similar. So that nothing has really changed. And I did some analysis up here. And except maybe the peaks being off by 0.01 dB occasionally or something, it's not that dramatic. So let's listen to, here's the bass from version 10. So again, pretty amazing uh, algorithm. So it's very crisp and clean. I don't hear drums. I don't hear anything else. Maybe the bass sounds a little crispy. I'm not sure, but for me, it's very close. Uh, not much of a change, I would say. Okay, here goes drums in version 10. So yeah, I can I can definitely hear the transients. I think it's crisper, a little more punch. It's very very small, very subtle, but it's there's a definite improvement in the algorithm, right? With the with the drums. So let's go to the solo instrument. This was called other category of other, and for this uh, version here, I picked sax and brass. Maybe I should have picked vocal, but listen to this. So this will be the violin and the saxophone. So there's a little bit bleed, right? Very faint in the back. I, I could hear the strings and uh, the uh, the hi-hat or the snare. Uh, let's listen to this uh, sax and brass version. Now that sounds pretty awful. Maybe it's a different algorithm. I should have maybe picked vocal. I'm going to try that too, but uh, even if if I pick sax and brass and it detects the saxophone, there should not be any artifacts 
you know, some subtones going with it. And I don't know where this comes from. It certainly wasn't on the track. Sounds like an octave below the saxophone, right? So this is really odd. So I'm gonna, you know, do a little researching here and uh, maybe even contact uh, Steinberg. I'm not sure why that is. So actually version 10 sounded better. Now the piano is the toughest one to catch because it's so embedded in the mix and their strings and it, uh, the, the frequencies, it's right in there. It's very hard. So this is version 10 struggling with the piano. All right, so yeah, you would never use that separately, but you know, I, I would say a C minus in extraction of the piano. Here's version 11. Still a little wobbly, but I could hear a couple notes actually clearer and, and, and with a little more attack. So it's it has been improved that that algorithm in the middle and maybe I'm sure there's a way to fine tune this. But yeah, that one is a little bit better than before. So in general, uh, extraction is really good. Drums and bass, stellar as always. The lead instruments, I gotta see. Uh, let me know in the comments if you extracted some vocals and did your own tests uh, with your own tracks and see what it did, how you like the result. So, but it's definitely good quality on, again, drums and bass are really crisp and really clean. So that's cool, especially working on some older mixes. So here you have it, Spectral Layers 11, uh, maybe worth looking into, uh, especially for a cheap price if you're an owner of version 10 anyway. So thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.